Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's July 16th, 2022, and uh, and I thought I'd show you uh, one of the projects that I'm that I'm working on right now. Uh, the area that we're in right here is an area that I've been working on for a couple of years. So uh, about 10 years ago, a friend of mine, John, brought over the dozer, and we took soil from ponds that we were creating up above in 2012 and all. And uh, so I had big mountains of dirt, and I asked John to break through a trail, uh, a road going down here, going down to where the beaver ponds were. And uh, so this was a was quite a steep drop off right here. Uh, where this soil is right here, it's four feet lower than this is where uh, where it was. And when you push the dirt down in here, so there's actually a road that goes down in here as well. And you're pushing dirt down into these uh, into these locations, similar to right here. And I'm trying not to lose this beautiful maple here, but you can see we're building up dirt around the base of the trunks of the trees and this is really a major no-no if you want to save the tree because what happens is the bark the protective layer of the trunk starts to break down because it's got moisture being held right up against it so uh, when you go by the cities and you see people doing volcano mulching taking mulch and putting it right up above the crown the crown is where the trunk attaches to the root ball that just sticks out of the surface of the soil. So you never want to put the soil right up against the trunk of the tree or mulching right up against the, the trunk of the tree. It's okay to put it above the root mass, but not up the trunk. What happens is the outer bark, the protective layer, starts to break down because uh, fungal organisms will start to decompose the bark, violating the under layer, the cambium layer, and damaging that. So these trees I'll probably lose over the next few years. Uh, but this is the whole area that we've been putting all the grapevines in for the last several years. I'm working in other areas now. So there was a big stone pile here. You go back three years ago, you could see where I was taking out the big stone pile in here and using it for roads. And then I had this big cavity here. So I filled this in with, with uh, grapevine. Uh, grapevine material the wild grapevine and then covering it over with soil so gradually been uh, reducing the uh, the slope to make it more manageable i'm going to lose beautiful trees here which is a shame uh, but i will gradually be able to get this this uh, pitch a little bit more gradual and i'll reforest plant all new trees in this area but yesterday I had to take down this tree, which died. Uh, and there's part of the, the other part of the trunk up there by Elon uh, and part of the root ball. But it was down four foot is where it was buried. And you'd see it's, it's unfortunately, you know, when you're putting in these roads, sometimes the soil has to go right up against the trunk of the trees, but you're trying to take out as few trees as possible as you're putting in a roadway. So uh, we may lose more of these trees over the years. So far, this maple and this oak has been doing well. Uh, part of the tree banged up against this one when I took down the big trees, trees here. Uh, but I'm gonna take some uh, soil and stone and fill this area in. And over in that area uh, is where I'm gonna be putting another pond before we get into the uh, into the area where uh, the beaver ponds are. So we'll take a, a ride down and back and I'll show you what we've been doing with some of the gravel down and back and the stone. And what I'm working on now. So all those gravel piles that you see over the last few weeks that I've been, uh, that's the, uh, the result of putting in hula culture pits where we've been taking all the grapevines and burying those. All that gravel, we resurfaced the roads. I haven't resurfaced this area yet. That's 
a 16 foot change in elevation over a short period of time. 14 or 16, I don't remember which one it is. This is one of the drainage swales from the vernal pool over to the side. So the, the roads, there's one there, and I did get like a, a couple inches of gravel just on the surface of that road, resurface it. I just want to put a little couple more inches here, just try to smooth them out a bit. And this is one of the uh, spillways for where the beaver have it really perforated. All along in this area, it's really perforated. This, it goes underneath all the stone down in here and fills up the lower beaver pond. And... Uh, so we'll come up here. I gotta change the batteries on the trail cams as well. And this is another spillway area here uh, that the beaver have created right in this location. Oh, I see one of the beaver over there now. It's too far away. That's one of the young beaver. That's one of this year's babies. You may be able to see a little bit of a ripple of the water over there. Last year's babies are helping mom and dad working the way around in here. I have shot a little bit of footage of them. Not much. They're working these areas all the time. So this is the area that I was working in. I, uh, Two years ago <laughs> it's been a while but this goes over to the property the other property on the next road and all underneath all this gravel so I'm just putting gravel on the surface of it is all stone from the stone walls I know you might be able to see around the edges here I try to get about two foot of stone and uh, it's getting thin right here, but you can see the soil is really moist and all. The ground gets absolutely saturated, and it's a gentle slope going down in this direction, going down to the third beaver dam down in that direction. So it just the water spills through the beaver dam all around in this area here, and it's a real thick area, and I want to leave as much of the thick stuff as possible as I find my way through, but I have to put three, probably four and five foot of stone down in this area and then put gravel on it as I work around because the beaver pond has these, uh, these areas that extend out further along the roadway there and then it, there's almost like a peninsula here and then the beaver pond dives deeper into this area behind all the brush and trees that you can't that you that's difficult to see but if you follow the the death of a lot of the trees that don't like wet roots that's the path that we're taking down in this area and this will take me and you know i won't i'll only be able to go you know a couple hundred feet at most this year with this uh, but we'll do what we can do and of course with the trail cams you can see where the deer come through here the, the fox the coyotes everybody works works through this whole area all the time but that gravel is used to just make a nice smooth surface on top of all the stone wall that I put in this area here to make our way 
and what we're doing is we're making our way through uh, lower uh, sediment filled areas on the downhill side of where the beaver dams are so that I can make excess roads and the reforest uh, plants that really like their, their wet root, roots and all. So all of these areas will make sure that there's plenty of vegetation, we'll have plenty of poplars and willows, all of those sorts of plants over in here so that the beaver have plenty of feed and all. We'll create from some of the brushes, I pull it out with Elon over here, we'll create piles and that creates habitats. And this will all break down into beautiful soil. The beaver will come over and grab what they want uh, for construction. And, uh, but this will create great habitat for the small mammals and reptiles as well. So we always want to, as we're putting in these roadways, make sure there's a really good foundation with stone. We want to make sure that it's smoothed out with some gravel. And we want to have plenty of places, pay attention to where the spillways are, uh, so that every time that there's significant rains, this whole area will wash right out, just like it does over there. But we plan it so that we're not going to take out our roads at all. So that's about one, that's one of the projects that I'm working on. And that's why we can use all that gravel that we use, take out of those culture pits.
Well, it's a couple of days later and we're getting some much needed rain. We've got about eight tenths of an inch of rain so far uh, this morning. And I'm super excited about this. It'll be very good for the food forest and the gardens and the ponds and everything. I thought I'd uh, try and end this video. Now we did shoot a little bit of beaver footage with two beaver besides the one that you could see the small baby going out here. There's been lots of activity with the beavers, but I just don't get the, uh, the opportunities to shoot it with my camera. And so now that it's raining some, I'll walk up here and take a look at, hopefully there's no droplets of water getting in the lens here. We'll see what we've been doing here, extending the road. So we're walking on the gravel that's on top of all the stone. And this is all stone from stone walls. And the reason that this stone works so well is the water just runs right through the stone. There is some dirt mixed in, but that'll eventually settle to the bottom and be able to work our way through. So, usually I don't want to try and muscle through this area, but we'll just take a little bit of a meander here. Well, it's still pretty thick in here, but this is a path I'm going to go. You see all of these sedge grass weed here. Really loves the wet water marshy areas here. I'm just working right through. But once I get a little bit further here I can see the ground level starts to increase in elevation here some. And I know that the I could see the dam right up over there. I just gotta get through some of this. But I'm sure, I don't know if you can see it. The dam's right up on the other side of these trees. So the goal will be to get right up along in here, go through this wet area here, probably another 60, 70 loads of stone, 60, 70 yards of stone down in here to make it and then the gravel on top of it. Uh, but this is just a natural area where where the dam is constructed so it naturally leaks. It's not watertight. I'm trying to make my way through here. And there's all the little spots of beaver cut off along <laughs> in here I'm stepping on. And this time of year the, the baby beavers are all out working. And the one last year's babies are working with mom and dad now and uh, they're actually developing quite nice get nice skills the little babies although I do see them out here in the big pond from time to time mostly I see them down in the lower pond and they're scurrying around there's three or four of them that I've seen at one time. So I've got more work to do to get up into that area there. I probably won't even make it a hundred feet this year because there's so much stone and gravel to move in there and then I've got to explore the path to see where the road, the road goes to get to the next property over there. So That's it for this video. More road work to do, but it's really gradual. We go, we carry that stone from way up higher on the property and uh, have to go tortuously through the woods, through the forest in order to make it down here. And uh, it's coming. It's just a slow process. Y'all have a great day. Enjoy yourselves. 
and I hope the weather's turning out better for you folks wherever you are and the pests are getting under control and you're enjoying your gardens. Take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.